be presenting something a little different than most people presented here. I'm going to be talking about some work that we've been doing to create a universal proteome purification method. And really the thing that spurred our desire to work on this was we were reading the literature, we were trying to reproduce things that we had seen other labs do, and we were getting really variable results. And when we, what, one thing we noticed was that proteome sample preparation varies very widely in the field. Um, so this is just a sampling taken from all of the publications in the journal Proteomics in the year 2015. And what you can see is that different methods are used um, quite often, the most popular being uh, TCA acetone precipitation. Thank you. And of all of these methods, they all have an issue where they're biased. So for example, TCA acetone precipitation is biased towards proteins that are more likely to precipitate or more likely to be resolubilized. And you're going to miss some proteins uh, when you use a precipitation method. Same thing if you use um, things like filter-aided sample prep, uh, which is kind of a new um, technique coming about. This, you can only use it with digested peptides, so people who um, aren't, aren't necessarily doing mass spec, maybe 2D DGA gels, that's what our lab primarily does. Um, you're, going, you're not going to be able to use techniques like this. So what we wanted to do was create a universal method for proteome purification. And we had three criteria when we were going about doing this. The first was that our technique should be independent of protein characteristics. That means it should not be biased for proteins with a certain charge, certain size, any certain type of protein. It should be uh, unbiased. The second was that this should be independent of lysis buffer. So we wanted a technique that you could use with many different lysis methods because, you know, different cell types take different methods to, to break them open. Um, and it should be independent of protein source. So whatever organ, model organism you're using, it should be able to work well with that. And so the idea that we had, the workflow plan, was that the first step would be to tag the proteins. So we were thinking if we could create a universal tag, tag all the proteins, we could then remove the excess tag, bind them to some affinity beads, wash away the contaminants, and then elute them. And so we wanted to also make this all in one tube, so a one-pot reaction that would be really simple to use. In previous work in our lab by Vanita Ganesan, um, created this molecule which we call biotin CDM. So what this is, it's a biotin molecule covalently linked to a CDM group. And the reason that this is so useful is that at a pH greater than eight, um, this will react with primary amines on proteins. This, this ring opens up and you can covalently link this biotin tag to the protein. And then at pH of five or less, this is reversible, so this ring will close back up, this biotin tag will be removed, and you are left with unmodified protein. So the idea was you can tag this, bind it to some beads, remove, uh, lower the pH a little bit, and then remove the tag. And so these, this is just showing that it worked. So this is alcohol dehydrogenase, which we're just using as a model protein. And you can see that with no biotin CDM, it comes off in all the washes. It doesn't stick to the, the avidin conjugated beads. However, when we label it with biotin CDM, we get really good binding to the beads as seen by the lack of bands here. And then when we lower the pH to five, we get really nice elution. And so um, this worked really well. However, when we label with biotin CDM, what happens is we have leftover tag at the end. And if we don't remove this excess tag, this, this free biotin CDM will compete with the biotinylated protein for binding spots on the avidin beads. And so what you actually get is less binding of the biotinylated protein and more binding by the biotin CDM to those beads. And indeed, that's what we saw. So this is just the input protein uh, when there's no biotin, no excess biotin CDM, so it was removed by dialysis, we see that 
We get really nice binding to the beads. However, when there is excess biotin CDM left in after labeling, um, we do see that it competes. And one of the things we wanted was for this to all be in one tube. Um, and so the way we went about solving this problem is we created a molecule called caged avidin. And what caged avidin is, it's an avidin core that has polymers grown off of it. And so the way that it works is that free biotin can get in and bind, but biotinylated proteins are too big and are excluded by this polymer cage. And so we wanted to use this to bind up that excess biotin CDM and prevent it from competing with the biotinylated proteins. And so um, this is just showing that we had biotinylated alcohol dehydrogenase. That was the same thing used in the previous experiment. And we incubated it with caged avidin, and we saw that we get a really nice band. So caged avidin wasn't binding our biotinylated alcohol dehydrogenase. When we add avidin beads, we see that our biotinylated alcohol dehydrogenase binds really well. However, when we add free biotin, just as in the previous experiment, we see that it competes for binding spots on the avidin beads. We once again uh, get release of those um, of biotinylated alcohol dehydrogenase. But when we add caged avidin and free biotin, we see the caged avidin successfully sequesters the free biotin, preventing it from competing, and we get really nice binding to the beads again, almost back to baseline. And so this was great. We were really excited. We're like, this works. And then we ran into a little problem uh, where we tried a different protein. So lysozyme, alcohol dehydrogenase is a pretty big complex, about 150 kilodaltons. Lysozyme is really small, it's 14 kilodaltons. And what we found was the smaller protein was able to diffuse in and bind to the caged avidin, even with the polymer cage. So we started playing with some, uh, poly some modifiers for those polymer chains. And so what this is showing is this is the input protein up here, and then this is after incubation with caged avidin. So you see our original uh, caged avidin, it bound almost all of the lysozyme. However, we were able to create a series of other second generation caged avidins that did not bind um, the lysozyme to a great extent, and in fact, the 5% modifier gave us less than 10% binding. So that was really exciting. Um, and so now what we are doing is testing this with full protein extracts to make sure that this works not only for single proteins, but for complicated mixtures. And so just to conclude, the overall purification scheme that we imagine is that you would have your protein and you would add, incubate it with biotin CDM at a basic pH, about eight. Uh, this would biotinylate your protein. However, you would still have a little bit of biotin CDM left over. You would add this caged avidin molecule, which would bind and sequester all of the biotin CDM, leaving you with the, this bio, uh, caged avidin biotin complex and your biotinylated protein. You would then add your avidin beads and since the biotin CDM is sequestered, you get really good binding of the biotinylated proteins to the avidin beads. Then from here, you can wash away all the contaminants. So you, you would wash away this caged avidin biotin complex, but also any DNA, RNA, carbohydrates, lipids that could interfere with proteomic analysis. Then you would just be left with this complex here, which you would lower the pH to about five, and this would release that biotin tag, leaving you with a pure unmodified protein mixture that you could then go on to do mass spec analysis, 2D DGA, whatever you want. And so these ideas came from a lot of different people. I would like to thank my advisor, Jonathan Minden, um, which this is really his baby. Uh, Vanitha Ganesan did all of the original work with biotin CDM. She originally um, developed this as a way to do immunoproteomics, um, and we just modified it a bit to try to uh, utilize it for um, proteome purification. I'd also like to thank Alan Russell's lab, specifically Chad Cummings, who helped us synthesize all of the caged avidin molecules, and the rest of the members of our lab, and i -Corps for funding, and that's the end. <laughs> Yeah.
Not yet, because we're still, we still have some um, optimization to do, but we're hoping to get it out there as fast as we can. We want to make it kind of like how Kyogen has their kits for DNA RNA purification. We want to do that for protein, because we think we can, if we can make it more accessible, we can make proteomics easier for people who normally wouldn't do it because it's expensive or things like that. So, so yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're from which university? Carnegie Mellon. Connecticut. Yeah, Carnegie Mellon University. It's in Pittsburgh. Where it is? It's in Pittsburgh, up north. <laughs>